G'day, this is Simon at South OC Cars and Coffee. I'm with Mark, who has a classic car of the week. What is it, Mark? It's a 1965 Ferrari 330 GT. So pretty. Check this thing out. Mark, you were driving in the entrance this morning, and I looked at this thing, and I went, oh, that is a special car. How long have you owned this? Um, actually had it quite a long time, 21 years Oh, at have this you point. really? Wow. That's excellent. And it, what condition was it in when you bought it? It was kind of a nice driver. It sort of was one of those that looked good from a few feet away. Yep. It drove okay, had, had some issues and uh, ended up finally doing a, a full restoration. And uh, that was completed in 2018. So fa fairly recently. Yeah, it looks like it's a fairly recent, but a beautiful restoration as well. I mean, the nice thing about I like it when you see a restoration that, that you, you have to question, is it original or is it a restoration? And that's what you've done with this. Yeah, it's sort of a lot of the Ferrari Club judging and those events. It's, it's a really about originality and condition. Yep. So you kind of want to make it as correct as you can. Yeah, and oh, you've done a magnificent job of it. Now, I, I'm taking it was this red originally being a Ferrari, or was it a different color? So, um, it's been red since 1973. Right. So, I, I repainted it, and it's a factory color for this car. Yep. But its original car from the factory was actually blue. Oh, ah, okay. Um, you don't lose points in the major shows if it was a color that was from the factory at that time. Yeah, right, interesting. So and that was that. I, I just sort of kept it the way it's been most of its life and you know it sort of appealed to me but yep. um, that, that's kind of the story on it. Uh, it is magnificent. Um, can we have a look under the hood or yeah, if I should absolutely. probably say the bonnet being a there European you car. Let's check okay. it out. Yeah I'll pop it. So it's a little dark in there to see but what a beautiful power plant. This looks like everything is bone stock original. Um, yeah it's um, pretty accurate to the way it would have come. It's a a four liter all aluminum V12. Yep. And uh, it was kind of the last era before any smog equipment. So it's um, doesn't have, there's no power steering. Yep. And, um, no air conditioning. So, you know, it, it has pretty decent ventilation through the car, but on warm days, you're obviously, your your ventilation is rolling down the window. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's a few interesting things about this that I want to point out. First of all, notice there's no fuel injection. There, three downdraft carburetors on there. Th which that, is... That's correct. Yeah, it's three three Weber carburetors. Um, so what what I find is with modern gas, as long as I put underfill it with just 10 gallons and re and put new gas in once a month, yep, uh, it doesn't gum them up and it works fine. Um, if you, if the car were to sit, which I, I drive it weekly, you know, smart, you, smart move. You can, you can sort of gum up the carburetors yeah. easily, so I sort of prevent that from driving it and underfilling it. Uh, these a lot of people don't understand. If you own a car like this, you need to start it regularly and you need to drive it regularly. I've heard of people that will just go out, they'll put them on blocks and then start them. The problem with doing that is if you're not turning over the gearbox, if you're not turning the the uh, differential, you're not taking the gears and putting them back through the oil that sits in the bottom of that casing. That, and that's when you can start to have problems. That, that's absolutely correct. The seals will go bad. Yeah, they'll and get the hard. the ones that are regularly driven are the ones that drive well. Yep. So I actually put this in my schedule every week. So I make sure almost no matter what, that it's driven every week. And I, I try to take it out for at least 45 minutes to an hour. So it that's, really that's goes great. through a full heat cycle and you know, I don't have to put it on a battery tender. It starts right up and, you yep. know, it, it continues to drive well without problems. You know, there's a couple of other standouts that, that you wouldn't see on a General Motors or a or a Chrysler or a Mopar or a Ford product from this era, for example, is look at those, those, um, those twin uh, distributors and twin coils back there. So there's a there's a distributor on one side for one bank of, of spark plugs and there's a distributor on the opposing side with its own coil. So uh, it's amazing to see the complexity of, of that. And uh, you got two, two sets of points to do, I guess, whenever you do the... that. That's absolutely right. It's kind of interesting. There's a lot of um, things in series or with two, like two distributors, there's yep. two oil filters, yep. there's two 
um, caps to fill in the oil. Um, you've got actually uh, brake boosters. If you can see here, there's actually two, oh, there is two. brake boosters, yep. which is pretty unusual. Separate line for the Lots of redundancy on everything. Yeah. So oh, the thing that uh, I wonder with two distributors is, you know, as a guy that's owned cars with the distributors before to do the timing, you have a timing mark on the front of the motor uh, on the flywheel and you turn the distributor clockwise or counterclockwise until you get the timing mark in you know, a certain number of degrees before top dead center. But with two uh, do you do a similar thing but using say for example uh, bank one on one timing light and bank two on the second one or how do you get the timing correct well um, um, I, I actually kind of leave that to the professionals right but I, I have a, a long-term mechanic um, an Italian fellow that uh, was uh, worked on Italian uh, racing cars in Italy in the 70s and uh, he's been the one sort of mechanically in charge of the car and yep. he has certain equipment that he uses for getting um, the points and, and the, everything set up correctly. And what's nice is once it's set up, it, it you know, other than, you know, regular maintenance, it, it stays, you know, working properly. Yeah. And it doesn't really require much in, in the way of adjustment. No, that's great. And once again, that's because you put fresh gas in it, gas in it you drive yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Well, Mark, what a wonderful, wonderful car. Great to see you here. As our winner of Car of the Week, you get this Meguiar's Complete Kit, which includes the uh, polishing sponge, cleaner wax, uh, scratch remover, car wash, glass cleaner, interior detailer, and hot shine foam. You can keep this magnificent 1965 Ferrari looking in the pristine condition that it's in. Congratulations, and thank you for bringing it out. Absolutely. Uh, my pleasure, Simon.